Okay, tonight we're doing the comparison of two fairly high-end telescopes. We got this guy here, who is a 180 millimeter Maxi Tovkasik rain, and this boy over here, who is the Sky Cannon, a 11 inch Schmidt Cassegrain. rain, and we're going to take a look at their performance versus Mars who's super bright at the moment. Now, both of these instruments are actually pretty good for planets because they're very long focal length. So if you want to look at something that is big in the sky, you want a short focal length, or um, and if you want to look at something small, you need a long focal length. And both of these guys chalk in at about three meters of focal length, which is bloody fantastic for planets. Uh, so what else is different between these two? Uh, well, the first thing is just the light gathering ability. This is seven inches across the bottom there, it's 180 millimeters. This guy is 11 inches, which is, oh cool, 280 or something. Um, so this has about twice the light gathering capability of this boy, which makes a big difference. Um, it also comes at the cost of weight. This thing, the top section of the, the, the Sky Cannon here, uh, weighs about 35 kilos, 70 odd pounds. So that is, I can barely move that on my own. Um, this thing is much more portable. Top section here weighs, oh, well, the telescope is like seven kilos, I think. Um, but, uh, so the focal length is the same. So if I put a sensor at prime focus, it should be basically the same for both of them. Uh, light gathering will be different, of course. So you'll get a much brighter image than this. In principle, you should get more resolution with a big mirror as well, but that's not always quite true. And the reason is, I'll show you, is up on the front here, is if I stick my hand down the telescope, you will see there is a giant central obstruction with this. The Schmitts have a very large central obstruction, uh, which eh, you lose a little bit of light to it, but the most important thing is you lose resolution. This thing on the front, by the way, is just a dew shield. You know, if you get on to later in the night um, and it's still night, dew starts to form on the on the correct plate here, and that's bad news bears. So, on the uh, Maxitoff, the central obstruction is much, much smaller. So you, in principle, get a, a more contrast image from the Maxitoff. These are meant to be much more comparable to the refractors, uh, whereas these give, um, um, on paper, less contrasty images. So let's do a side-by-side -side comparison of these looking at Mars, and just because it's kind of fun, uh, let's see if we can laser Mars, there you go. That's a laser, green laser, lasing Mars, cool. Okay, so this is Mars through the the planet killer, the eight inch, um, sorry, seven inch Maxitoff. Now I'll show you the first problem with this is when I try and focus this, just the slop in the mirror, right? It moves it that much. That's just how much the mirror moves. You see, the way the focus works on these things is they're spherical mirrors, so you, they, there's just something that moves them back, backwards and forwards. But there's a bit of slop in the mirror when that happens, so these things are a pain in the ass to focus on small objects. I've got a device on the back of the big Schmidt here that helps you out with that, but I, I can't rapidly transfer it from one of these telescopes to the other. So I'm just going to have to focus this one as best as I can. So this is something you're going to have to factor in in the comparison of these two. Good. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to record three sets of data of a thousand frames each. And this is on the Maxutoff. And our exposure is... Something you can't see at the moment. Our exposure is a sixtieth of a second, and uh, the gain is twenty-five dB. Okay, so that's the second bunch of data that I've gathered. Now I'm going to refocus one more time. 
Because yeah, you don't want to compare one where it's slightly out of focus to one where the focus is good. This is now on the Sky Cannon and uh, the exposure settings now are very different. So our uh, time for the exposure has gone down by a factor of two because we're getting twice as much light. Okay. Um, so how does this affect our resolution? Well, we'll see that in a second. So on the telescope here, there we go, um, you can see I've got my standard focuser knob that moves the mirror backwards and forwards. That thing's great, by the way, because it gives you a huge range on where the focus comes. And then I've got this thing, which is the, there's a rack and pinion thing. It's actually fairly expensive, but um, they, they basically move now the focuser backwards and forwards. So when I when I focus on this, it doesn't smooth the image around. When I focus on the on the main mirror, you'll see it moves the the image of Mars around. So I can now do the crude focusing with this and the fine focusing with this. And this is what it actually looked like <laughs> from the eyepiece, from the sensor. This is the same sensor on both machines. And that's what I had on the front, which is a Skyrus, um 236, a color camera. And it's got a two times Barlow on the front, which was all freshly cleaned before I went out today. So if we take this off. You should be able to see our beautifully clean sensor underneath. Um, well, there's our sensor. And. Oh, it's beautiful. So. Yeah, that's what I was doing on the planetary imaging with. Now, obviously, you've got to be a bit careful with your comparisons here because the atmosphere is highly dynamic and can vary from minute to minute, from second to second. But this was uh, fairly representative uh, data. Now, spoiler, the one on the left is the bigger telescope. That's from the big Schmidt, and the one on the right is from the, the Maxutov. Well, you, know, you might think that the, the more expensive telescope gives you a better result. But this is far from clear on, on many fronts. For starters, uh, if I were to put a, an expensive refractor on here, it probably, even though it would cost more than either of these telescopes, it wouldn't give us good an image. And maybe I can do a comparison with that um, at a late date. Now, I've heard many times that the bigger the telescope is, the more susceptible it is to the atmosphere in that, you know, if you have a very small telescope, you only need a very small column of air to be stable uh, for the telescope to give good seeing, to perform at its optical resolution, whereas a much bigger telescope needs a much bigger column of air to be stable. Uh, but that really doesn't seem to be so much the case here. And especially once you get into the Registack stuff where you're evening out some of the shimmer of the atmosphere through uh, digital processing. There was one other thing that was super bizarre here. You'll notice there is, on the processed image, a sort of black rim on the left side of Mars, which you get with the Maxutov. Now, I scratched my head for a long time, wondering how this came about as an optical artifact, until you actually look at the raw data, and you can actually see that rim there. So I'm not quite sure where that comes from. It's probably that, you know, when it gets slightly out of focus, it looks like that, and it might drift slightly out of focus because of the atmosphere. I'm not quite so sure why it's, you only see it or why you mostly see it with the Maxutov and not the Schmidt. It might be uh, that with the Schmidt, you've got much more light. I mean, for certain, when you actually look at these things through the eyepiece, it's it's conspicuously brighter with the big schmet. So who is the winner here? Well, both of these telescopes give very respectable images of Mars. The big telescope, the 11-inch Schmidt, the Sky Cannon, is, in terms of optical performance, a clear winner. It's got about twice the light gathering capability and it looks like it's got a better resolution as well. So the loss of contrast from the central obstruction 
it doesn't seem to be a big factor here. Although you could argue that even with this, the Maxutov does actually give a more contrasty image. But the thing where the Maxutov really wins out is just on sheer portability. The Sky Cannon is barely portable. It's a beautiful machine. It tracks fantastically. It's great for astrophotography. It great, gives great views of the planet. It's just not really portable. Whereas, of course, the 7-inch Maxutov is eminently portable. At 7 kilos, it'll go in your luggage in an airplane. While the 11-inch Schmidt, the top section alone is some 35 kilos, which means that it's oversized baggage on any airplane. In fact, I think the legal requirements are is if it weighs over 22-odd kilos, you have to have more than one person to lift it at an airport. So even if you're not into the this sort of thing, I hope you found the comparison of these two telescopes interesting. And if you did, eh, leave a thumbs up on it. And there are links to many of these things in my Amazon store below. But only if you're into that sort of thing, of course. And uh, thanks for watching.